two quarterbacks, both from Louisville, both 32nd overall picks in their respective draft classes, both from South Florida, one being from Broward, the other one being from Dade County. So this this game with the Ravens and the Broncos with Lamar Jackson versus Teddy Bridgewater, this should be a fun one because that it's going to be a game within the game. But let's talk about how we think this thing is going to go, the good, the bad, and everything else in between. Yeah, this feels like a So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we're here to talk about the game we got coming up between the Ravens and the Broncos. And this is at 425 p.m. It's crazy that each of our four first games this year, they will all have been at different times. Um, so this is just Ravens. They they got to be on point. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready and don't get caught slipping as you did in week one. But anyway. We're past that. It's week four now. So, the Broncos, um, Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater, he has not thrown an interception, and he has not fumbled the ball. So, he is playing mistake-free football, and that's a big part of the reason why these Broncos are undefeated. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, the Broncos, they, the teams that they beat are the Jets, the Giants, and the Jags. And none of those teams have won a game. And while that is true, they can only play who's on their schedule. That's it. So if Ravens want to earn some respect from the Broncos, then you got to beat them. But anyway, with Teddy Bridgewater, he is somebody who I'm glad he's getting his shot. I'm very happy for Teddy Bridgewater. He's getting his shot. We know how his career started over with the Vikings. Uh, and then he moved around a couple of places, but now he's found... Uh, a, a place for now uh, with the Denver Broncos. And I know when they first signed him and then you heard all this talk about them potentially still trading for a quarterback, I was worried for Teddy Bridgewater because I was thinking, oh, man, it's, it, it seemed like the way that his career was going, like he was going to be like sort of another Tyrod Taylor, uh, where teams, they just use you sort of as a stopgap um, and you just you don't have any consistent opportunity. And hopefully it, it doesn't go that way. I um I just love seeing when guys, especially underrated guys and guys that have been through a lot, when they get their shot. Um, so I'm happy for Teddy Bridgewater, and I mean, especially with him being from South Florida too, that helps a lot too. But anyway, um, Ravens in this game, you got to find a way to get to him. You you have to find a way to disrupt his rhythm with his team because he obviously has really good rhythm and chemistry with his guys. Because again, they're not turning the ball over. They're not turning the ball over. He he's been taking care of the ball. So everything that he does, and it, actually everything that the Ravens defense does, it's going to count that much more, whether in a big, good way or in a bad way. So if Teddy Bridgewater completes a pass, you wrap up tackle, bring the, the receiver to the ground, it's going to count that much more and be that much better. But if Teddy Bridgewater completes a pass to his wide receiver and you try to tackle, you do one-arm tackle, you go for the hit instead of wrapping up or something like that, and that receiver breaks, it's going to hurt that much more. And, I mean, you could say that for any game, but the reason why I highlight that for this is because since he plays mistake-free football and he really takes care of the ball, your opportunities to either stop him or get a turnover are going to be extremely limited. They're going to be very limited. So that's why everything that you do on defense, you got to do it that much better this week. Wink uh, it, with the blitz. He's he going to have to find a way. Now, the Ravens do get Justin Houston. They get Matt Abike back. They get Brandon Williams back. So those guys, uh, they should be that much fresher. Because last week they had off because they were on the COVID list, but now they're, they're off of that. So they're, they're officially back. So this gives this replenishes the Ravens' defensive line. And it replenishes their pass rush, too. So let's just hope that they can provide some consistent pressure. Um, and even possibly, even I, don't, I don't expect Wink to ever just like, okay, I'm only sending for this whole game now. I don't expect that well, until we run into the Chiefs again. But hopefully they can generate pressure without having to send everybody. Because for a quarterback that makes very, very good decisions, 
if you send everybody and he sees, oh, wait a minute. Oh, this guy's open. Oh, that guy. Oh, okay. He'll, he'll hit him. He'll hit him and he will make you pay. So Ravens defense has to play some sound football this week. The tackling has to be good. You got to tackle. Somebody pointed it out in the comments like, man, the Ravens have been struggling to tackle this year. And they have been. There have been a lot of missed tackles. And again, the practices have been a lot different. You can't practice the same as you used to. A lot of rules have changed and whatnot that benefit the offense heavy. But still, the tackling has got to get a lot better. It has to. So hopefully uh, it does. Now, the uh, the Broncos, they got some guys that the Ravens are familiar with. Um, undrafted free agent Tim Patrick. He was actually on the Ravens. The Ravens, they signed him as an undrafted free agent, but it obviously didn't work out. He came to the Broncos, and it has been working out. And, in fact, the Ravens were thinking this offseason, they were like, man, we really like that guy. They even checked in with the Broncos on Tim Patrick before the season started, just sniffing around for some reason. So, you know, they have a, a great deal of respect for him because you wouldn't check on nobody that you don't care about. Um, so they have him. They also have uh, Corlin Sutton. So they got some big receivers, big outside physical receivers. So Marlon Humphrey, Anthony Aver, they're going to have to bring it. And again, even more reason why you need to wrap up and tackle. Now, unfortunately, uh, K.J. Hamler and uh, Jerry Judy are both out dealing with injuries. Um, K.J. Hamler, he's out for the year. He tore his ACL, unfortunately. And sorry, we we really sorry for you, man. But us, us Ravens fans, we know exactly what Broncos fans are going through. Trust me, we do. Um, and with Jerry Judy, I think he had a broken foot, uh, so he's out for a while, um, and hopefully he'll be able to come back by this season. Um, so, so we'll just see what happens with that. But you still got to watch out for these guys, man. The Ravens defense can't get caught slipping. They really can. So Anthony Averett, he's been doing really well this season. He's been having some quiet games, and quiet in a good way. Uh, to where you don't hear, oh, man, Anthony Avery got caught on. No, you ain't been hearing that. He's been quiet. Uh, and then Marlon Humphrey, besides that play against the Chiefs where he gave up the touchdown, and besides uh, that overtime play against the Raiders where he gave up the touchdown, besides those, he's been having a pretty good year too. And he, is, he of course, is asked to do a lot. Uh, he covers the team's top target. Not even top receiver, but their top target. Whether it's a receiver, whether it's a tight end, Marlon Humphrey's been moving around and doing a lot. Uh, so he has a lot of responsibility. Now, uh, last week, it was Hawkinson. Ravens took care of him. Uh, so hopefully this week, same same business happens against Fant. Uh, somebody pointed out, I think it was my guy D3. He made a really good point about the fact that the Ravens, one of the things that he thinks helped big time with the Ravens taking care of Hawkinson last week was Jimmy Smith being back. And Jimmy Smith being back was big. That was big. And I, I did not even think about that aspect of Jimmy Smith coming back. Um, but, yeah, Hogginson was a non-factor last week. And, and that was huge. Uh, so hopefully the same rules apply to Fan this week. Uh, Ravens, their run defense, they get that much better with Brandon Williams being back. Um, so they got to hold it down for Melvin Gordon and even Teddy Bridgewater, too. Because Teddy Bridgewater, he ain't going to burn nobody or whatnot, but Teddy Bridgewater, he got some speed. So if you got everything covered, Teddy Bridgewater could take off on you. So you definitely got to watch out for it. Whew. So Adafi away, he got to be out there a lot. Um, now on special teams, the air is a bit thinner up there with Denver. Um, so, yeah, just, just the whole team, not even just special teams, but. A lot of breathing exercises this week. <sighs> but anyway. <laughs> Special things. Justin Tucker, Sam Cook, Nick Moore, our new Wolfpack, our Wolfpack 2.0, so to speak. They just got to continue to do their thing. Um, Devin Duvernay, I'm not sure if we're going to see him on kick, on punt return. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Ravens handle that. Whether they want the possibility of a big play or they want more sure hands back there. So we'll just watch to see if it's going to be Duvernay, if it's going to be Prochet, or if it's going to be somebody else. So we'll just keep an eye on that uh, as the game goes along. But Ravens offense. Uh, Lamar Jackson 
this year has been opposite of a Teddy Bridgewater when it comes to the turnovers because he's had turnovers in every single game. Uh, the Raiders gained two fumbles. Chiefs gained two interceptions. Uh, Bronco, I'm not, we didn't play them yet. And the, uh, and the Lions gained one interception. Now, does that mean he's been playing bad? No. But if those mistakes get cleaned up, Ravens, they're 3-0. They're 3-0. But, we, I mean, we, we could talk about the what-if and the shoulda, coulda, wouldas and all that good stuff, but it's about moving forward. The fact that there have been turnovers in every game and the Ravens are sitting at 2-1, and one, that lets you know uh, that this is a good football team because despite their mistakes, they, they've been able to overcome their mistakes for the most part, for the most part. And they were actually, Lamar Jackson has done enough to win every game. Because they are a 32-second, no timeout defense holding it down for just 32 seconds. Not letting an offense score away from being 3-0. Because, of course, that Raiders game. But anyway, um, Lamar Jackson, if this game, if he can play mistake-free football, that will go a long way. A very long way. Uh, with Rashad Bateman and Miles Boykin, they've both been activated from injury reserve. They are not on the active roster yet. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I wouldn't really expect Bateman to play this game. Boykin, uh, maybe, but it's a stretch. But certainly I would expect uh, Boykin to play in the Colts game. And Bateman, uh, maybe, but if any one of the two comes back this week, I think it would be Boykin. But regardless, um, Hollywood. In this game, uh, we got to let him know, hey, it's, it's a little closer to prime time, so you can still show out. The lights ain't going to be on, but actually by the time we get out of there, the lights might be on. So, do your thing, go off. Got to have a bounce back game. Because, yeah, Hollywood had probably had the worst performance of his career last week. Um, not even just stats-wise, but just really performance-wise. Because of those three drops, and those were big. They, they were all huge. And you, you can't do that. You can't do that. Um, you you got to help your quarterback out. You got to be there for him. Especially when he puts it on the money for you, 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 you got to be there for him. Uh, so, it's important that Hollywood bounce back this game. Sammy Watkins, um, just continue to do your thing. He's had a couple drops now, too. But it's important that uh, those receivers just continue doing what they've been doing. Uh, Broncos' defense is nice. So Ravens may have to get a little more creative um, in getting different guys involved because Broncos' defense, they're going to try to take out Hollywood and take out Sammy Watkins. So Duvernay, Prochet, uh, it's important that Ravens, they got those guys ready because – Broncos defense may be just looking at our outside guys, well, not just our outside, but Hollywood and, and Watkins, because those have been our go-to receivers. As I mean, why wouldn't they be? But um, Duvernay and Prochet, this this could be a game for them uh, to really need to step up. Uh, Mark Andrews, because this, I think, in my opinion, this would be a uh, this is a big game. It's a big game. It's not the hugest game, but I, I think it is a big game. It's an AFC opponent. Uh, they're undefeated. You're going into their house. You're looking for some consistency. Uh, your team, you've been in every game. Uh, you, there's been some fights. There's been some stressful games. Uh, and this team, while they haven't played anybody who's won a game, they're looking to get their respect too. So you can't sleep on them. Um, but with Lamar Jackson, I just uh, want him to continue doing what he's been doing, minus the turnovers. Last week, oh, it was an amazing game from him. Amazing game. This dude, everything that I, well, the only thing that I've been saying that he really needs to fix was a deep ball. It was just really connecting on a deep ball. And not that, oh, every single deep ball he throws is going to be a completion or every, not every, or every single one is going to be on the money. No, because it's not. Not every, it's, gonna, it's a lot of quarterbacks who, they're deep. They're going to overthrow some. They're going to underthrow some. It happens. But with Lamar, just, he just needed to, Really put that right touch on it. And last week, he did it perfectly. Perfectly. But, of course, he was let down. Can't be let down this week. Because, again, the Broncos, they, they play mistake-free football, man. And you cannot afford to be missing these opportunities. So, everybody got to help each other out, man. Now, the Ravens offensive line. Terrible game week one. Great game week two. Very up and down game in week three. This week it can't be up and down. You got Von Miller. 
Now, Bradley Chubb, he's out with injury. He's going to be out for a, a while. But you, they still got Von Miller. And that dude is a problem. He's still, he been a problem. He still is a problem. There's a reason that they kept him. There's, there's thought about that they might let him go and he might test free. But nope, they said nope. He ain't going nowhere. So, Ravens. Yeah, boy. Just thinking about it, man. Um, they they got to do everything that they can to keep Von Miller away from Lamar Jackson. Last, last week, Lamar got sacked four times. So, guys were coming in free, unblocked, untouched. You cannot afford that against these Broncos. You cannot. Don't do it. Offensive line, I don't know what y'all got to do this week to keep Von Miller and company away from Lamar, but do it. Do it. Hopefully, the Ravens can get that running game going, going again. Uh, with Tyson Williams, um, whether it be Tyson Williams, whether it be uh, Latavius Murray, or hopefully it's a combination of both, and, of course, Lamar Jackson, too. Um, hopefully, they can get a consistent run game going. Uh, but last week, I, I wasn't mad that the run game was getting stopped because the, the passing game was not getting stopped. And I love that they, was, they were going with what worked, and that's important. So Greg Roman, he's been having a good season so far. He needs to continue to go with what works. Whether the passing game is hot, it's taking off, cool. The running game is hot, it's taking off, cool. Go with what works. Of course, you know, mix it up a bit, but if it's hot, let it stay hot. Keep it hot. Keep it going. Um, Mark Andrews. It's important that he showed up because they're going to be very physical with him. So it's important that he comes through. When Lamar puts that ball on the money, come down with it. Mark Andrews has been doing a great job. One of the, one of the things that, I, that has impressed me the most about Mark Andrews this year hasn't been the catches because he ain't been going off yet. I mean, last week he did go for over 100. But one of the things I've loved about Mark Andrews this year has been his blocking. His blocking has improved a lot. And that's big, especially in this offense. You, you got to be able to block. But Mark Andrews blocking has come a long way. So shout out to Mark Andrews for improving on that, on that in that aspect of his game. Um, because when you see, like, Lamar was running for a big play last week, and you see Mark Andrews hustling and blocking his behind off, I'm like, all right, Mark, that's what we talking about, man. Let's get it. Uh, so shout out to him. Um, so, yeah, this, this is going to be a tough game, man. The more I think about it, the, the more tough I think it's going to be. It could go either way. I mean, you could say that for any game, though. I think for Ravens to win, again, you can't turn the ball over because Broncos don't turn the ball over. Hopefully, this will be the game where the Broncos do start turning the ball over. But you you, you got to be careful with the football. You have to. You have to. Every single game th this year, Ravens, they can't get in their own way. They got to stop getting in their own way. They've been their biggest, worst enemy this year so that can't be anymore that is not allowed anymore because it's, it's going to end up biting you in the butt as it already has week one and it has week two and week three but they were able to overcome it both of those weeks you're playing against a team like this it's going to take that much more to overcome it because they don't make mistakes so i i think that this game it comes down to it i think the ravens they stress us out again um, but I think that they they show the Broncos like, hey, we're better than those guys that you played. We're going to bring it a lot harder than those guys that you played. They 0-9 for a reason. Now, again, again, Broncos can't choose their schedule. But I think Ravens show them that, hey, you ain't played nobody like us yet. And I think they take it by four. Because I, I just – if now – if they play mistake-free football, if they don't turn the ball over, then I think they could win by two scores. But if they play like they've been playing, which it hasn't been bad, but it hasn't been great. And this team, if they clean up the silly mistakes, the penalties, the turnovers, the just the, the, the drops, the, they clean that up. This team could be great, and they're not even all the way healthy yet. They never will be all the way healthy, but they got a lot of guys coming back. But the guys aren't back yet. And this team is in a good position, man. So hopefully they clean it up this week and they get the job done. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all so much. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all supporting a little extra. Thank you for all that y'all do. As, as Team Keep It Clean as a whole, everybody. Because y'all are all a part of this. I love y'all. Let's go have a good game on Sunday. And we out.